campaign director at Defund the BBC, Rebecca Ryan. I mean, Rebecca, we have you on all the time to BBC bash. They make it too easy for you, don't they? <laughs> I mean, it's just gift after gift. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, this is an absolute joke, isn't it? That the highest paid news um, presenter or talent is has been um, missing in action for the last eight months. Yeah. I mean, it's just an absolute insult to the British people, isn't it? These people who are being bullied, 130 people a day are being prosecuted by the BBC for non-payment of the TV licence. And yet you have this top paid guy who is just actually currently refusing to take part in, a, in an investigation into this issue. So it's not even as if the, you know, an investigation has taken this long, which would be bad enough. It's just that he's not actually, you know, able to take part in it because he's too mentally unwell. Well, he was perfectly fit and well right up until the scandal broke. So yeah. it's sort of convenient, isn't it, that he's suddenly for the, for the last eight months unable to, to take part. I mean, it just absolutely stinks of sort of narcissism doesn't it but i mean obviously we have to wait for the, the the investigation to take place but in the meantime um it's just shocking that the, the british people are being forced to pay for this yeah we're paying for it and it's also uh, infuriating hugh's uh, colleagues at the bbc so this is four hundred and forty thousand pounds that could be shared among others we could hire someone else uh and uh, of course you know he keeps telling the bbc i'm too ill to be investigated. Well, it's eight months on, uh, no sign of uh, any recovery soon from Mr Edwards. So the BBC, uh, for the sake of licence fee payers, for the sake of everyone else who works in BBC News, I'm afraid they've got to start getting tough with this guy and say, unless you cooperate with an investigation, we're going to have to cut our ties with you because this is frankly grotesque and it's typical of the BBC. They're just kicking the can down the road, hoping we wouldn't know Notice. And guess what? In July, this full list of uh, the highest paid salaries uh, in the BBC will be published. And uh, Hugh Edwards' name there with 440 grand next to it is going to stick out like South End <laughs> Pier. <laughs> Absolutely. And I think it's, you can't be allowed to carry on like this, where someone is just sort of declares themselves sort of too unwell to take part in an investigation. You know, out in the real world, real people, if they get into trouble or if there's an ac accusation made against them, an investigation will take place regardless. And, and certainly in, the investigation into this um, should have been carried out by now. Um, you know, it's it's fairly clear that there is a, this young person involved. There will be all sorts of data on that side as well. There's enough there's enough information out there um, for people to to carry out an investigation without him taking part. So I don't see why they're not pushing ahead with this so that we can put an end to this grotesque salary being paid out to somebody who's who's just not working. It smacks to me as well, if we were talking about this earlier, that there is sort of a hierarchy, isn't there, within uh, the media industry, and I'd say particularly within the BBC, where if you end up being one of those lucky bods who gets to put your fizzog on screen, you're somehow turned into a deity that, you know, you can do no wrong. And the BBC protects those people, despite any sort of accusations that come from junior staff members or the general public. They crowd around those people. It's not the first time they've done this. Springing to mind, Martin Bashir, Russell Brand, of course, Jimmy Savile. This just this is a pattern that keeps repeating itself. Absolutely. And this is the thing that's so dangerous, isn't it? Because you've got these big names, as you say, who are who become untouchable, who and you know, we don't obviously know the full details of Hugh Edwards because this inv investigation is being blocked. But th this is what needs to be reviewed and this needs to be changed. Because as we've seen, as you mentioned, there are a whole list of names of people who have been allowed to get away with behaviour over decades and the BBC has just protected them and closed ranks and sort of, you know, cranked up the PR machine sort of to keep business as usual. When actually what needs to happen is the BBC needs to have a complete culture change where it says, OK, hang on, there's an accusation has been made. We need to deal with this really quickly. This These people are being paid by the British taxpayer, essentially, because of their current payment mechanism. It's a, it's a, it is a tax on live broadcast TV. Um, and they can't just be... <laughs> They can't be um, made accountable for the behaviour of these huge beasts who are sort of like just able to, you know, <laughs> untouchable to get away with whatever they want. And it is obscene the difference between what people like Hugh Edwards earn 
and what the producers and the assistant producers uh, who uh, get his programmes ready, uh, they prepare the programmes, they do all the work. They're on, if they're lucky, 45 grand a year. He's on uh, 440 grand a year. And that is part of the culture, the rancid culture of the BBC uh, that they have to sort out. It is, as Alex said, it's this deification of anyone who reads the auto cue <laughs> on screen. Sam McAllister, <laughs> who is the uh, producer who set up the interview with uh, Prince Andrew uh, for Newsnight, uh, when she went public and said, it was me, I'm going to write a book about it, I'm going to tell everyone about what I did, the BBC hated it. They hated mm. it. Uh, they only wanted Emily Maitlis, the interviewer, to take... Uh, to take the uh, credit. So that's the BBC for you. They've got to do something about that. Uh, great to talk to you, Rebecca. Thanks, Rebecca. As always.